Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Why was Malcolm X's Janazza at a black Christian church? For those of you who, subhanAllah, we love you. For those of you who don't know, let me just make this bigger so y'all can see. So you know that this is not cap. We have a history here. Malcolm is an excellent ambassador to Islam and the inner city black communities. Those inner city communities, those schools serve as a, as pipelines to prison. Those inner city black communities, by the way, this article is on the Black Dawa Networks if y'all want to see it. Uh, where many don't expect to make it past 21, those inner city black communities, okay, it's going to, let me just scroll down here, okay? The answer to the questions are found in a revealing book, final chapter, chapter, I Buried Malcolm X by Hisham Jabber. Hisham Jabber was responsible for Malcolm X's Janazah prayers. According to Jabber, listen, listen, immigrant Muslims, were looking for excuses not to attend in Malcolm X's Janassa. We're not done yet. That's just the first line. Who was looking for excuses not to attend Malcolm X's Janassa? Immigrant Muslims. He states, these communities would proclaim that Hajj Malik was not Muslim. Malcolm X was a great no, 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 you're not. No, you're not. You're not. Malcolm X found the truth. These communities would proclaim that Hajj Malik was not Muslim. You spit in the face of black people who stand up for themselves. You said that Malcolm X was a Catholic. And now that his legacy is spreading throughout the entire earth, you open your fork tongued mouth to claim Malcolm X for yourself? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you even speak to us like that? You have always had a long history of abandoning the black communities wherever you go. Let me ask you something. Let me ask y'all something. Have you ever wondered why there are no white American Muslim communities, but there are a ton of imams policing Islam in brown and black Muslim communities? Shout out to Musa Richardson. Shout out to Omar Quinn. Shout out to, I studied Arabic for six years, but don't know Arabic, Daniel Hakikachu. Daniel Hakikachu himself trying to claim Malcolm X. How dare you? You think you are worthy to wag your crap stained fingers that have been up the cracks of your white zaddy's butts at us? You think you're going to teach us a lesson about racism? Is that what you believe? And then, not only that, but make it a religious duty that we do not talk about Black issues. And you couldn't even attend Malcolm X's funeral? I told y'all you ain't ready. Later, Hisham Jabba states that we knew, however, 
that their failure to recognize Hajj Malik at this time was due to, listen, the United States restrictions on their activities and their blatant cowardice. Yeah, uh, on a couple, a couple of notes on the subject, right? Um, very interesting topic. And you guys touched on a lot of points. And so just my experience in, in, de- in, in a lot of these things, especially in life, uh, you know, racism is such a touch, touchy topic in this com- country right now. And everybody is uh, so-called woke and everybody is sensitive to a lot of things. Um, but, you know, you have a lot of Muslim organizations right now who are using the Black Lives Matter and all of these other different uh, movements in order to push uh, agendas. And I'm not to be cynical, but my experience with a lot of these organizations from their executive level of these national Muslim organizations, I don't find a lot of them to be authentic and actually working on this issue of racism or classism within the Muslim community. I remember prior to 9-11 how the uh, interaction was, and and all of you brothers are old enough to remember how we were prior to 9-11. 9-11 changed the dynamic in the Muslim community. Because prior to that, most of our brothers and sisters um, uh, they were drinking this, the American Kool-Aid, as you want to say, for lack of a better term, right? In terms of, you know, go ahead, get your degree. You know, we become doctors, engineers, and whatever's happening right now, the problem is y'all black people, y'all don't, y'all slaves, y'all don't understand this flow right here. See, y'all ain't get it. We understand it. And so we got this thing moving and grooving. And then um, after 9-11, right, and... Um, you know, the federal agencies started kicking down doors and confiscating and auditing people books and people started getting beat up in the street and things of that nature. Then everybody started coming to the uh, African-American Masajid. I, I remember that I was there, uh, uh, you know, I used to be security for Imam Muhammad Rahimullah at that time. And I remember the heads of all of these national organizations was calling his office, asking for Nasi and asking for advice. And we used to joke, he used to be like, yeah, boy, they, ain't know, they don't know this American white man like we know him, boy, they, they gonna learn now. And, you know, we used to joke about it because posted after that, everybody became, you know, they wanted to be kumbaya and let's get together and we a community and we got to combat this Islamic phobia, this, this word that eventually had came out. But prior to that, it was basically, you know, you stay over there, do your thing, we do our thing. And then, you know, we'll meet up occasionally if we have to. Uh, with that being said, what I noticed is that majority of these brothers, man, they are continually to pump this bad dope that was given to them by their colonial masters. Um, even the way that their countries are set up right now, those basically were given to them by conquerors. You know, that wasn't, the Islamic world ain't cut up the way it originally was cut up. This is cut up now, given to them by their French, Dutch, British, uh, 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 Portuguese masters and, and so on and so forth. Spanish, uh, Spanish, Italian, German masters, the whole Muslim world is cut up based on that alone. So most of this initiative that they continue to push it, push is like that. So like I told a brother the other day, I said, like, you want to know, you want to see if Black Lives Matter to some of them? I said, try to marry one of his daughters. You'll see if Black Lives really matter to my man, right? You know what I'm saying? You'll see if Black Lives really matter to him. And that's a reality that we're dealing with. And like Sadiq said, that app, I experienced that on Hodge, me and my ex-wife. Back in 2000 or 2001, we were on Hajj and the sister came to us because uh, she kept dealing with some issues in her in her tent. And one sister sat down to us and she was an Iraqi sister, but she lived in America. She said, yeah, the issue is that, you know, they call y'all ass. I said, what are you talking about? She said, slave. I said, what she said? Well, I said, word, that's what they call it. She said, yeah, that's the issue right now. So, and that shocked me on Hajj, you know, these, these experiences. And, you know, I say that to say that 
like when the Sadiq said that, and I've heard that too, that yo, you're not a real Muslim, you accepted Islam. But like I tell people a lot of time, man, majority of Muslims, and we have experienced it, they are ignorant, man. They are just born into the religion from their country. It's like thinking an American knows Christianity because he's born in America. And he, like, they are literally ignorant to Islam, man. They, most of them don't have a clue. They still praying the saints. They still got all type of nonsense going on, all type of innovative foolishness, th things that's been passed on from tribal, from cultural, and now you have from their colonial masters. And so most, a lot of Muslims, when you meet them, you just be like, oh, bro, you don't know nothing about Islam. Yeah, you speak Arabic, but you are completely ignorant to Islam. And that's a lot of things that we are facing also. You're facing that. And so what happens a lot of time, man, that, that this issue of racism, it has to be eradicated on an individual basis. Like Muslims got to look at themselves in the mirror, man, and say whether or not it's the reverse racism. And sometimes what happens with us, man, being victim of it so much, like when you come into Islam, that's the last place you want to experience racism. Like for those of us who are revert, taking a shahada, you have brothers. And so he'd be so hyped and geek. And he may have read what Malcolm X said about his experience in Hajj and so on and so forth. You got to realize Malcolm was, you know, he was getting treated different. So when a brother comes into a situation, he's looking for that brotherly feeling. So when he's faced with that racist into a contact, you know, it just, it, it activates the gene in him. That he, you know, that reverse racism, he may not mean it, but at times it's like, that's his go-to mechanism to fight it. Like, what? And, he, you know, in his mind, he's looking at a Muslim, whether or not he's Pakistani, whether or not he's from Palestine, wherever it is, whatever group hit him with some type of race of interaction, he just reverts back to this mindset that has protected him and helped him deal with it for so many years in his life. And I think just the Muslims in this country that we interact with, man, we first of all, we can't let it slide. You got to call it on the spot and you got to check it and you got to correct him or her where they at, man, and make them man and woman up and face that bad a dad, man, that, that ignorance that's within them, that tribal ignorance, that colonial master ignorance that presides in them that they continue to push. Right. And that's and that's just the issue. And then when you're dealing with these national organizations that you have the big groups, I don't want to say no names, but they we all know who they are, man. Like a lot of them, bro, they have political agendas. Right. And it ain't really about because you see that they push Black Lives Matter, but then they also push LGBTQ and all that. So they really it ain't really about racism and and and, and, and saw because right now they trying to figure out how to get themselves out the cookie jar. Right. All of their money, all of their greed, degrees, none of that stopped them from going through the fitness after 9-11. So they trying to make sure that they don't get pushed back into that. So to them, it really ain't about solving the racist issue within the Muslim community. It's about pushing their political agendas and being in tune for the American dream and putting themselves in the best position to continue to make money, build their institutions without as much riffraff that they experienced post 9-11. And we used to laugh, I'm like, yo, bro, what you going through ain't nothing. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't get them dogs sicked on you. You didn't get them fire holes put on you. You really ain't been lynched. You know, your man may have got beaten up coming out the store. Somebody may have threw some eggs on you, but you really ain't experienced the full wrath of this American white man like we had. You understand what I'm saying? So it really didn't ruffle our feathers the way that it ruffled yours. But I just don't think that they, a lot of Muslims are, are authentic in addressing that issue. And in closing, a brother told me he had approached a sister, a Somali sister for marriage. And all the Somali brothers was just trying to knock her down for lack of a better term. So he presented a situation, you know, whole thing, his whole situation was right. And her father, one of her brothers, was her was her um Wakil. And he told, he said, man, you ain't marrying no American black dude. You crazy. He said, that ain't happening. We ain't going for that. And she said, she said, she and she told the brother, she said, I can't do nothing. She said it was so crazy that 
they know all the Somali dudes ain't trying to do nothing but be intimate with me. And here it is, you present everything right. You you know, you trying to get my walk kill number. You, you you know, whatever my diary is, you like, you coming correct. And they just hold shut the door down. All because he was an American black dude. He hit me with that. I said, bro, I could have told you that before you even went down that rabbit hole. I could have told you what that was going to be. But he he was shocked. He just, he thought like, yo, I'm, I'm together. I got my thing together. I make good money, good job, good credit. Got my own place. I'm coming through the door the right way. I'm not trying to back door. And he just said, yo, when she came with him like that, and he and he was like, yo, she said, oh, yeah, that's just a regular thing. You know, blah, blah, blah. I knew it was going to be an issue. And so it's just not, it's, it's not an authentic situation. And most of the imams, most of these large groups, these organizations, they don't feel that this is an issue, honestly, man. They, this right here is just, is, is, is they modus operandi. You follow what I'm saying? They don't look at it as an issue. They just look at it like, yo, this is what it is. This is how we rock. We the real Muslims, y'all abs. And this is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? We have pumped fake with you and around you, but behind closed doors, this is how we carry it. And until we, until they face that ugly demon, and like I told brother, man, when you study the, the companions, when you study those first couple of generations, and then you compare them to us, you actually see why they conquered and why we are the conquered. Uh, again, man, may Allah continue to reward you brothers for these heavy conversations and may they continue to be used as an impetus for us to rectify our affairs in the in the in the in the inspire us to change and to be active and diligent in not just like Sadiq said in gaslighting, but in actually addressing these issues of racism, of ignorance, uh, of, of poverty, uh, uh, of failed marriages, of discord within the brotherhood, uh, dysfunctional families, and all these other issues that we uh, act like don't they don't exist and uh you know that we sugarcoat and and don't address a lot of times uh and may this be uh one platform that allows us to look at the the ugliness that we face and and come up with solutions and uh, amongst uh amongst those uh, uh people who say they are part of those who follow the sunnah salam alaykum wa rahmatullah Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs>